club on the mix. You could have cent. drop it like it's hot. That is on our overall draft board. And then you turn around and you get the, the pop songs that we traditionally think of. You can go Fireworks by Katy Perry. You right. can throw Toxic Britney Spears on there. You got Bootylicious. Bootylicious. When we go to L.A., what's that harmony? song we sing? The Party in the USA. Party in the USA. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But she lied. You hop off the jet at LAX and you look the other direction. Like the Hollywood sign. Oh, is what does she say? She hops off the jet. It looks weird. Uh, look to my right, and I see the Hollywood sign, but you have to look to your left. Left. Oh, she was lying. Yeah, Miley Cyrus lied to everyone. <laughs> That's a tough saying. Molly was lying. Uh, but no lie, we are so happy that you're here. I'm happy to what be here. What time is your tea time? We're at 9.06 today. All right, we're going to get you out at 8.30, which is perfect because we've got jam-packed show. D'Angelo Williams will be coming on then. But oh, i got to say, for yes. congratulations yes. to D'Angelo. If you yes. happen to be watching... Uh, going into the Hall of Fame, uh, the College Hall of Fame. First Memphis player I saw yep. to be able to be inducted. So congratulations to you. Much deserved honor. We are excited to chat with D'Angelo about that. Excited to talk to you about the Memphis Grizzlies, who have another game against the San Antonio Spurs tonight. <laughs> Just saw them here on Monday. But Grizzlies in the middle of a seven-game winning streak. And I think what defines the streak as, as tonight will be the, the official midway point of the season – They've beaten teams that they're supposed to. And at, that's a sign of a, a good team beats the teams in front of them no matter who's out there on the court on both sides. At the end of the day, I always tell people, people are like, well, they only beat this team, this team. Well, that's the only team that was on the schedule. And, and the Grizzlies don't make their own schedule. So when, when the teams are put in front of you, you got to go out and play. And, and the sign of a maturing basketball team is when you play these teams that are sub-500, teams that are struggling, but they still compete hard, you got to go out with the right mindset. And I think that this team has had the right mindset during this seven-game stretch. I thought the five-game stretch when they were one and four just didn't understand how to deal with the prosperity at that point. And, but now I think they're understanding that everyone will get up for them, no matter who's on the other side, who's out, who's in, who's sick, who's not. The Grizzlies have to play a certain brand of basketball every night to be successful. Yeah, they've had the right mentality, the right personnel, and John Morant will come back tonight. He's expected to come back tonight against the Spurs. But in the meantime, I mean, how much can we talk about Tyus Jones and oh. the value of him on this team? And, and right now is the perfect time to do it because he's in back-to-back -back starts, continuing to average over 20 points as a starter, showing his improvement as a scorer, still having the ability as a passing point guard as well. But just the stability factor. Like, looking at him in those two games, you don't even step into the gym and think, ah, oh, this could be a little tougher tonight because there's that much confidence in Tyus Jones. And when your starting point guard is John Morant, that makes it just a very interesting dynamic that you have in Memphis that's so lucky to have. Well, I'm going to tell you why it's so lucky. It's because very, very rarely do you have when your star player goes out, the guy that comes in for him, you don't worry. You don't feel like there will be a drop-off in your team at all. And this is not I always – people are like, oh, so you think Tyus Jones better than John? I said, I, I never said that. I said what I said was the team doesn't drop off at all because of his level of play. He does something totally different than John Morant does when he's in the game. But it's nice to have another guy that when your star goes down, he steps into the same position and your team can continue to advance. And so uh, it was a luxury for us to be able to have Tyus Jones. It was nice this summer that he decided his role here was what he liked. Uh, he loved being in Memphis. He loved the team. And so he resigned. That, that was – the biggest issue this summer was to be able to re-sign Tyus Jones so that this Grizzlies team could continue to move forward. And so we've seen him go out and play who he thinks he is. He thinks of himself as a starter. Every night he goes on the floor, he feels like he's the best at that position, which is the only way that you can think if you're going to be successful in this game. And so, yes, we are, uh, we are blessed to be able to have someone like Tyus Jones as our, as our backup point guard who really could be a starting point guard in this league. And thus far, I'm going to knock on wood, cross fingers at all times because sports are always tricky, but health-wise yes. the Grizzlies are approaching and, and have existed in their best spot of the season and finally getting to see what this group actually looks like with Ja, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr. all on the same court. It's weird because I still don't feel like we've seen it all operate in the way Desmond missed a couple more games, and now Jaw's been out a couple more games as Jaron Jackson Jr. has ascended into this more. You know what he's going to do for you on the defensive end every single night, but as he continues to be even more aggressive on the offensive side of the court, w sky's the limit, right? Like it, it's acceptable to feel 
really, really excited. I was watching a part in the interruption yesterday, and you know how they go through all the topics. Yep. And at the very end, it said Grizzlies. And I was like, they're not going to get to them. They're running out of time. They're running through topics. And they had one sentence to say about the Grizzlies. And Mike Wilbon said, Western Conference Finals market. And I was like, all right, I'll take that. Well, they put themselves in that position. You know, this is back-to-back -back seasons. Last year, you finished second in the West. This year, now you're tied for first with, with Denver at this juncture in, in the season. And so the, the thought process from those that are outside is because this Grizzlies team is playing better. And, and they're a deep basketball team, and they know how to win games, and they have a star in John Morant. And so uh, the, the consensus for everyone else is, yeah, this team can make it to the Western Conference Finals, especially if you start to look around at what the other Western – conference supposed powerhouses with the Golden State Warriors and their struggles, the Phoenix Suns and their struggles at this point. And you see all of these different names at the top of the list. Denver Nuggets, Memphis Grizzlies. These are, these are not your household name teams that are now at the top of the Western Conference. So now you look and say, well, why not the Grizzlies? And I say the same thing. And it's nice that they can continue to win through the injuries, but continue to play the exact same way, get the attention from the national audience that you would like to have but still keep their same identity as they move forward, which is playing as a unit. Don't let the national attention change yeah. how they've been able to be successful. When you think about what this means for the rest of the NBA, I'm going super big mega picture here. You bring up the fact that the Grizzlies and the Nuggets, and I think you can look east at the way the Bucks have been built from a team construction standpoint, the Celtics, the way they've been built from a team construction standpoint. Are we forever and for always done with the the big three era of going out there trying to build the the super team that centers around three superstars i hope so uh and and uh, i think the the issue with it is if you try to put those three people together then what do you do with everybody else and, and I, I don't know if there's three people that you say will play together that just automatically makes them a winner uh and i think it's because the teams have gotten so much stronger and because teams have gotten stronger then the individual play is not enough for you to win basketball games and so i think as people started to team sat around you know what there's not enough three people combinations to put together for all of these teams to be successful it's just not enough guys it's not enough guys to do it and so everyone said well can we get one or two and then now can we fill out the rest of our roster so it's good to see some some thought process being put into it's very easy for me to say oh we can be good with lebron james Dwayne wade and chris bosh just put whoever else out there on the floor and we'll be all right. And I think that this, the rest of the league is so much better that that doesn't work anymore right now. But the thing is, you say put whoever else on the court and the way the, the salary caps were structured back in the day, whoever else ends up being like Ray Allen. So it, one of the greatest if, shooters if of all he, time. If he's okay with, but you're talking about right. Ray Allen at, at just being a shooter at this point in his career. So it's, it's fine if you just want to, I mean, some teams it's ha it has been successful for. Remember the Los Angeles Lakers tried the same thing when Kobe Bryant was still there. They went out and got Gary Payton. They brought all of those older guys, oh, Carl Malone, Dwight they, those, Howard. Those guys, and Sam, so it, it, you can try it. It's just can you find the right veteran at a minimum that to go along with all of those other guys? And I, I don't, I don't know if you can do that in today's game and still be successful as it when it first happened. It was, it was a phenomenon, but I think now that the team structures are so strong that just three guys aren't going, aren't going to cut it. The NBA released its mid-season media survey yesterday. Not a ton of Grizzlies representation, but one place where you would expect there to be definitive, and, and there wasn't, Defensive Player of the Year, who was on track to win that. Brooke Lopez coming in. Yeah, I would love to get Brevin's face at this moment because it looked like <laughs> mine reading this list. Um, Brooke Lopez received 37% of the vote. Jaron received 27% of the vote. I have to think it's strictly because of sample size. I was listening to a podcast where someone who voted on it, uh, to Michael Cole of the Commercial Appeal, said that they received the survey a couple weeks ago. So perhaps people filled it out really quick, didn't think about it. This is an award that Jaron Jackson Jr., by all means, could and should be able to run away with, in your opinion. Well, I'm trying to figure out the Brooke Lopez situation because, mm -hmm. I mean, unless you were just saying defensive player of the year is one thing that you do on defense, then, oh, okay, then his name is up at the top. And, you know, I love Brooke Lopez, Stanford yeah. graduate. It's, it's, it, well, I don't know if he graduated yet, but went to Stanford. And, and I, I absolutely love how he has transitioned his game to be able to be, able to be a three-point shooter. But on the defensive side, he doesn't switch in pick and rolls. He's not guarding smaller guys if they have the ball off the dribble. 
Uh, he doesn't block perimeter shots. There, there are so many other things to the defensive side of the ball that I don't understand how Brooke Lopez becomes your top guy at the list. I, I don't know if he's leading in blocks. I haven't looked at his stats to see if he's leading the league in blocks or what that may be. But for the versatility that Jaron has shown on the defensive side to couple that with the blocks, I don't know if there's anyone else in the league that can do it the, at the level that he has done it this season. So that that – Whoever came out with that, that, that is – Brooke Lopez, I love you, but that is ridiculous. The other thing that surprised me the most was the question of which team will represent the West in the NBA Finals. And the Clippers received 34% of the vote. It's so hard to know, right? Because you never know who's going to be on the court for the Clippers at any point during the regular season, and it's just this assumption that everything will magically come together in the playoffs. It Are won't. you a believer of that? No, nope. you're not. I'm not. Uh, and again, it goes back to what I was just saying with CJ is that I just think that the rest of the league is too good. Yeah. Just for you to just be like, all right, know what, playoff time, you two, let's go, we'll win the game. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that'll happen. I don't know if they have the synergy with one another enough to be able to play. And, it, and I talk about it more so when it gets into crunch time. Where, how do we get a shot? Who gets the shot? What's the spacing look like? Do we have offensive rebounding coverage? On the defensive side, what are our defensive covers that we like to be in? What's best for us to be successful? I just think that, again, I go back to teams are too good for you to think that just at the end of the year, just throw, somebody, throw these people out there on the floor and they'll be good. Not taking any way thing from the greatness of Paul George or Kawhi Leonard. Great individual players. You go down the list, they have a number of good NBA players, but you still need a level of connectivity for you to then go out and run the gamut through the playoffs and win the finals. Uh, I, I don't know if they're going to have enough time together to, to have that type of connection to win. Brevin, how about them damn Giants? Hey, how about those G-Men? How about them G-Men, hey, BK? Hey, Kurt, listen, you know the last two Super Bowls we won from the wild card. I know it. You tell, you, you tell me what's going to happen, BK. I'm just here on uh, the Listen, this is what I try to tell the people. We lost, we lost championship, we won. And this doesn't go all the way to the finals. This is to make sure that we get to the NFC finals. We lost to the New England Patriots. Should have beat them in a regular season. They were undefeated. We go to the playoffs. Then we take care of Green Bay, uh, San Francisco. We get down, we get to the – now we win the championship. We, now we're in the, the big game. And who's on the other side? Who is it? You see Peyton. I mean, you see uh, Tom Brady on the other I side. Thinking that he's going to win another championship. The audacity. But what happens to G-Men step up into the plate <laughs> and the G-Men win a championship? So what I say this year? What you say? We go into it as a wild card. We got a winnable game against Minnesota. Took a 61-yard field goal for them to beat us in Minnesota when we were injured. Philadelphia Eagles played their entire roster in the last game of the season. Same way the New England Patriots did. They just beat our second and third teams 22-16. So after we beat mm -hmm. Minnesota, guess who we play? Who you play? Philadelphia Eagles. Mm -hmm. Go get them division mm -hmm. round. Right it, 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 it looks like the, it looks like a, a repeat of what happened some years uh -huh. ago. Like the Giants may have an edge getting into the NFC Championship. Now from there, if the 49ers make it again, oh no no no, we can't be reliving history. Oh, we are. We can't relive we got history. Got a chance. Now we got a chance to go. Now on the other side, the only thing is there won't be a Tom. Uh, it won't be a Tom Brady on the other right. side. Whoever it is on the other side, I think my G-Man might be able to surprise some people. We're getting healthy at the right time. And Daniel Jones had good throwing games yes, to yes, finish yes. the season. That's, he sure did, brother. He, he sure did. He, he just needed to have he some sure games to throw did. the ball. And so now ah. I feel, ooh, I ooh, got, I got I, chills. I ran into you the night before the fantasy football championship game, and I said, <laughs> Damn it, Brevin, I need 40 points from Daniel Jones. And that's, that sounded aggressive. Now, even as someone who has hung on to Daniel Jones in my two-quarterback league all year, it got a little shaky there throughout the middle of the season. But I, I kept you. him. I stayed strong. And Daniel Jones came up 19-24 for 177 yards and two passing touchdowns, 91 yards on the ground, and two rushing touchdowns for 37.95 points in the Sleeper Fantasy Football app. And I won a championship with Daniel Jones. Mm. As my quarterback, That's and I, what I'm and I think to you. I think you know, just like the Giants, were embedded into my into my brain to, well, no, to keep believing. You know, you know, we always say that's our point guard with John Morant. I started saying with Dan, that's my quarterback. Get my offensive line. Okay. Make sure that 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 uh, Saquon is healthy, and find some receivers. We uh, the thing that people haven't talked about. Daniel Jones been throwing to guys that was on the practice squad, and then wasn't even on the team. And they still figured out a way just to have some semblance of offense. And so 
I'd say for, for Giants fans, we've never been explosive offensive teams. We never had them. We've always had great defenses. So continue to have a good defense. If we score 24 points, we are ecstatic as Giant fans. We'll take that. We think like we can win with 24, 28 points. So let's see if they can go out and score at least that much and see if the defense can step up. Love that Landon Collins is back in the Giants uniform. You smell CJ, that? What you, what, you st- what you sniffing at over there? What you smelling? It smells a lot like 2011, Brevin Knight. That's what it smells like. <laughs> What's the defining scent of 2011? <laughs> Victory. <laughs> victory. Just a victory of the Victory, man. If only Whatever I... Whatever cologne... No, there should be a cologne called Victory. There should there, be. There is a cologne called Victory, isn't it? Isn't all is there? perfumes and colognes just named ridiculous stuff? No. Like, it, I mean, like yes, passion? No. Uh, if like there, Phoenix? If, is, is there one? There's, there's a Victory cologne. I'm a thousand percent sure. If I bet money, I'd bet there was a Victory Paco cologne. Paco Rabanne. Victory. victory. I know it. Man, I you thought I had You can go buy some for $107 at your local Sephora. Just pick a Today. ram, pick a random ass word and throw it on a cologne bottle. Like they, they got it. What, what's the axe phrase? Uh, I like, don't know. Isn't Phoenix? it axe? Phoenix. <laughs> axe is like that's the ain't that the spray where you yeah. don't yeah. shower? Yeah, yeah. that's the like old, the don't shower yeah. spray. That's the teenage yeah. boy spray. Just a little oh. axe. <laughs> that and uh, Abercrombie's fierce. That was the smell of boys in my high school. <laughs> Abercrombie fierce. Fierce, and they had like the shirtless man on the cologne bottle. And I was like, fierce and funk walking down the hallway. Fierce <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brevin, because we have to get you to your tea time, I know. But I want to ask you one question here at the midway point of the season. Outside of the obviouses, the biggest X factor for the Grizzlies to go chase a championship is what? Defensive three-point percentage. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to stick with that thing. If they can continue to keep teams at 12, 13 threes a game, then if they happen to only do nine, they can make up that deficit. <laughs> we don't we don't need the 9 to 15, mm-hmm. 16. So if they can continue to keep that number down, I think they'll be just fine. I would piggyback and say increased free throw percentage. And oh. I would like for them to go watch the Miami Heat game from last night where they went for 40, 40 for 40 at the line and uh, try to get some of that by osmosis. I'll tell you this much. I like yours better than mine. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go with that because, because we sit there every night like, this is going to come down to the end. There it is. Look at that. 44. It's going to come down to, I hate to say it, one of these games, we're going to get into crunch time, and you're going to look up and say, we got to make free throws. And I don't want to see us splitting free yeah. throws. So we'll see what happens. It might be the free throw rock bottom that's needed for the free throw epiphany to happen later on. Well, we're going to keep, so we're going to rub all type bottles, genie, mm-hmm. everything. We just need that percentage to get up 76 can we get to 76? We're at 71. It's 76. <laughs> we will have you back in the studio uh, to celebrate the Giants as they continue on through yes. this playoff experience and for the Grizzlies as well. Enjoy the golf course today. We will take a quick break. We will come back. D'Angelo Williams, college football Hall of Famer, joins us on the other side here on Rise and Grind. Don't put off getting your oil changed, Memphis. The Grizzlies' official partner. Take five oil changes faster than you think. There's no appointment needed. There isn't even a waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take five oil changes so fast you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take Five's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Memphis area. And remember, at Take Five, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. That means you won't even have time to show off your perfect jump shot or your killer crossover. Take Five, the stay in your car 10-minute oil change. Hey ladies, it's your girl Big Sue. Let's have some real talk about these fibroids and how they're causing you to miss out on life events. Doubling up on your products when you do leave the house, only to keep running to the bathroom because of the bladder pressure. Or maybe you're dealing with pelvic pain so intense it nearly takes your breath away. Be present and win your life back with the fibroid team at VIP. Proud sponsors of the Memphis Grizzlies. Call 901-747-1007. That's 901-747-1007. Or online at VIP Fibroid. Represent Every Day, presented by Delta Dental of Tennessee, is an incentive-based program focused on keeping youth K-6 through grade engaged in school in order to combat truancy. In partnership with Shelby County Schools and with the help of Delta Dental of Tennessee, the Grizzlies are focused on reducing chronic absenteeism among the most impacted schools in the Mid-South. Students in the program have the opportunity to win fun and unique prizes by going to school every day and being engaged in the classroom. For more information on the program, Visit grizzlies.com slash community slash education today. 
Hungry as a bear? Grizzlies fans can score big by ordering their favorite combos. If you pick up the Crunchwrap Supreme Combo from your local Taco Bell through January 24th, you'll score a key tag good for a free seasoned beef crunchy or soft taco on future visits. What's better than a Grizzlies win? Free tacos at Taco Bell. Stop by today to get yours. Available at participating Memphis area Taco Bell locations while supplies last. Free item valid per disclaimer on back of key tag. Nacho fries are back at Taco Bell. You know, the fries covered in bold Mexican spices you dip in a warm nacho cheese sauce. You can also dunk them into nacho cheese sauce or pour the sauce onto a pile of them and create like a nacho fries nachos. The thing is that you eat them with nacho cheese sauce. That's what makes them nacho fries. Otherwise, you're just eating fries and sipping on nacho cheese sauce, and that's the wrong way. Sorry, just really passionate about nacho fries. Nacho fries are back, only at Taco Bell. At participating U.S. Taco Bell locations for a limited time only while supplies last. Contact local store for hours and participation, which vary. Sonic has something delicious for you. Hey, announcer guy, that's your cue. Indulge in the all-new Sonic Steak Butter Bacon Cheeseburger with creamy steak seasoned butter and crispy bacon. Stacked on a 100% pure beef patty with two slices of melty American cheese and grilled onions. Layered between a warm bakery bun. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely craving that previously mentioned thing. Sonic Steak Butter Bacon Cheeseburger. Mmm, Sonic. Limited time only at participating Sonic Drive-Ins. Life Care Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. At Life Care, they wear their hearts with pride. Their passion is their people. They want you to love what you do and where you do it. Their employee-driven culture encourages a healthy work-life balance and supportive work environment. They invest in your success and well-being so that you can provide the best care for the patients that they serve. Join the incredible team of EMTs and paramedics in Memphis, Nashville, and across the nation today. Learn more at lifecareamb.com. Welcome back to Rise and Grind. It is Wednesday. It is time to catch up with one of our favorite guests. And I ask everybody to please rise. Those in studio, those at home, if you're in your car, keep on driving. But get out of your seats. Put your hands together for the first college football Hall of Fame inductee in Memphis history. He's the all-time leading rusher in Memphis football history. He is D'Angelo Williams. He is a Hall of Famer. Let's go! What, what's going on, guys? I, I can't see you. I don't know what's going on. We had a technical difficulty or something. Is it on you, my end? You couldn't see. It's got to be on your end, D'Angelo. We stood we up for you. We can't <laughs> control your computer, dog. <laughs> Oh, uh, I didn't. I was like, man, they just really don't want me to see what's going on. I just figured, you know, as long as y'all can see me, we okay, right? <laughs> We're good. <laughs> what's up? Hey, I. How you feeling? I, Congrats. I'm feeling, I, 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 it, it's been a roller coaster. Let's just say that it's been a roller coaster. How did uh, you find out? Okay, so I found out through Twitter. Oh, um, good. Yeah, yeah, I found out through Twitter. Uh, not only did I find out through Twitter. When I initially found out, I called Romeo and I go, Romeo, bro, is this real? I was like, was I nominated or was I inducted? They was like, he was like, nah, bro, you in. And I was like, for real? So then I called Coach Silverfield and I go, Coach, is this real? <laughs> he goes, yes, you deserve it. And I'm like, all right, man, you know, I appreciate it. And I was like, yo, that's kind of cool. Like, this is like, this is a pretty exciting moment. It's an incredibly exciting moment. It's not surprising at all. You pretty much hold every single rushing record at Memphis it, still. It is. It surprised me because at the time, you don't really understand, like, the impact that you have when you're that age. Yeah. Whether it's a good impact, whether it's a bad impact, whether it's an impact at all. You don't, you don't know what level um, you are until – Later on down the road, I used to have a coach tell me all the time, he was like, um, ceremonies are good for two things. It lets you know, one, that you used to be that man. And number two, it lets you know that you are no longer that man. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it's, not, it's not just the Russian records at Memphis, right? D'Angelo yeah. holds records 
NCAA, all of college football, and you think about some of the great running backs that come through that sport, you think about uh, Barry Sanders immediately comes to my mind and what he did at Oklahoma State. You think about what Emma Smith was able to do at Florida. You think about Herschel Walker, what he was able to do at Georgia, Bo Jackson at Auburn, and D'Angelo's up there with the Eddie George at, at Ohio State, unfortunately. And D'Angelo Williams is up there with the greatest of the great at his position in that sport. He absolutely is. What is it, 34th consecutive 100-yard rushing game? NCAA yeah, yeah. record? Like, come well, on, D. Something like that. Come on, D. Your, your top, top six, top five, top six rushing yardage in that sport? Like, come on, man. That's easy no-brainer Hall of Famer, D. How's it feel, baby? Uh, man, it, it, it felt great at first, CJ. I ain't going to lie. I, when, I, when I initially got the news, bro, I was like, yeah, I'm a Hall of Famer. Yeah. And then, you know, you sit down, you take that celebratory drink. In my case, it was an orange juice. I took that celebratory drink, and I go, had a chance to think. Then I go, man, dang. And then everything kind of changed a little bit. How did it change? It changed because, like, it's not going to mean anything later. Why? This, this is what I mean by it's not going to mean okay. anything later. Right now, kids can jump in the transfer portal, and they can go from school to school if they want to. So what, what would be the criteria on making the Hall of Fame? I had to have everybody that you named that's up in the top five or six Every one of them stayed three plus years, right? Three or more. Now I don't have to stay in the same institution or the same program of the university. I could go from one university to another one and to another one. And then now what's the criteria for it? Because you can have one good year in the SEC and make up. Is Cam Newton a college football Hall of Famer? Is Derrick Henry a college football Hall of Famer? These are all guys, Mark Ingram, like guys that didn't play three, four years but still uh, possess, you know, some some history because we're Heisman Trophy. All I need is one good year, and I'm in the College Football Hall of Fame. So moving forward, what would be that criteria? Because the college landscape from how we used to play now has changed. So now they have to adopt with the times. And with them adopting and adapting, then what we did before them adopting and adapting is not going to be as sexy as it is for what they're doing right now. Does it make any sense now? It, it makes sense. And here's the, the criteria as I understand it right now. And, mm -hmm. and we can spin off and, and talk about somebody else who should be a college football Hall of Famer. But according to the rules, is it? You've got to be an All-American yeah. to be a college football Hall of Famer. So as long as you've got at least one All-American to your name and to your credit, you can be a college football Hall of Famer. So in the instances that you name, like Cam Newton transferred from Florida to Auburn, had that phenomenal year at Auburn, and then was was gone. Well, that one year he would be nominated. He would still be able to be a college football Hall of Famer because he was at Auburn for one year and he was all uh, all American. I believe you, you have you to know, be first team. First team. Yeah. First. You know who can't get in? Stetson Bennett. Stetson Bennett. Which can, might cannot. individually what? change yes, the conversation coming out of back-to-back -back <laughs> national championships, and Stetson Bennett will not be eligible uh, offense, to be offensive in the player of the game and MVP for all of the the yep. playoff games for all the four. semifinals, the two semifinal games he played in, and in the two championship games he played in. And you think about the numbers that he put up at Georgia, while they aren't you know spectacular jaw-dropping numbers, they're they're still really really good numbers. And yeah. he's got two national championships, one back-to-back. -back. There's something to be said for simply winning. Yeah. So Stetson Bennett, Bennett for, the, for not, him not being able to get in, makes about as much sense as the Mike Leach not being able to get in because he didn't hit the win percentage threshold by, what, two, three games? I believe it was two. Like, that's, they, they've got to I'm, – I'm off – I'm not for it. I'm not – I know a Hall of Famer by feel, mm -hmm. by, by right. sight. Sure, right. numbers help. Numbers absolutely help. You have to have a certain threshold of numbers to be a Hall of Famer in anything, but it is the feel of it. How dominant were you? And numbers don't always reflect that. The college football selection, college football Hall of Fame selection committee, they need to look at some of these criteria so that they can say, hey, you know what? While he wasn't this, he did do that, and that is still really, really impressive. Right. I, I, I'm going to tell you what's going to – I'm going to tell you what will be a slap in the face. And, and, and I can't make this up. 
and and this is when if you've made the college football hall of fame if this guy make the college football hall of fame you should turn your trophies in if tom brady makes the college football hall of he fame won't. i am going to walk over with whatever they gave me and i'm going to give it back because now it's more that you but you see what i'm saying though what what, what I, he can't make it because what he wasn't an all-american well, but let's just say Go ahead. What what other what other what other is that the only criteria? You just have to be an All American. I'm pretty sure that's, that's All American it. is the All American like is the, the barometer, the, the thing. First team okay. All American. Okay. If you okay. don't I didn't have see that, first team. Right. According the first to team? the according to the College Football Hall of Fame website, is a player must have received first team All American recognition by a selector organization that is recognized by the NCAA and utilized to comprise their consensus All American teams. He he won't get it, D'Angelo, not only because he's not All American. But because my man was battling with Drew Henson for some unforeseen reason <laughs> the entire season for minutes. And, and to, to Tom's credit, he came through that and he led Michigan, I do believe, to an Orange Bowl win over Did Alabama it? pre um, scandal at Alabama, which led to, to firing. Didn't and they like, like that. play half and half? Yes, it was stupid. That's insane. It was stupid. But, <laughs> but uh, we're, we're getting sidetracked here. But you had to do it because Drew Henson was a really good quarterback. And you didn't want him to go play baseball. And then those sorry suck eyes, led by the Steinbrenners, go to my man and say, hey, we're going to offer you all of this money to come be a part of the Yankees organization. And it's, hmm, am I going to play with the Yankees or am I going to stay in college? Of course you go play for the Yankees. They just lured my man away so that he wouldn't play quarterback for the University of Michigan. And that's reason number 98 why we hate the Ohio State Buckeyes. CJ, continues to grow. CJ, CJ I, I need you to put your fandom aside for why i mean your your hatred aside for ohio state and then i'm gonna ask you the same question jessica and i'm gonna give you a little time to think about it cj right. is maurice claret a college football hall of famer think about it i'm gonna give you some time i i, I i'm gonna give you some time okay how much time do i need before i say no <laughs> no <Yeah. laughs> no my, my instinct again when you go with the feel was he no. was he an All American? I don't. I, yeah. don't, I don't think he was Claret, a freshman All American. Yeah, he was. He was a freshman All. So if we count that, yeah, he, he, said, he, he said he all meets, the freshman records. Ten freshman of the year. All yeah, year he said all of them. Yeah, yeah, he meets all. the the criteria, but no. I, I, I'm you. You hit at something, D'Angelo, at the the start of this, and bringing up some of the players that you mentioned. That that one good year. You get what I'm saying? That one really really special year. I would personally like to see the the Archie Griffins of the world keeping it in the Ohio State family I would like to see the the Archie Griffins or the Eddie Georges again more Ohio State running backs who ran all over Michigan for some reason um I, I like seeing that right I, I in the Hall of Fame right, I don't think right. that having one spectacular year and don't get me wrong RG3 Cam Newton Johnny Manziel had two of those um, so I'm not going to say him. I'm trying to think of somebody else who just popped on the scene for one hot second for one, one year. year. Don't burrow. Uh, that Burrow, Bradford, uh, <laughs> Murray. That, Murray. They, they all, Oklahoma was just sending quarterbacks Kicking one them year, out. And, and they were just balling out of control. That's all well and good and fun please, in the moment. Please, USC. But I don't, I don't know if I would like those guys, if I had a vote, if I would be more inclined to vote those guys into the Hall of Fame because of one really yeah. truthfully – honestly spectacular year over somebody who had a two or three great exciting exhilarating years but, right i i, I, I wouldn't do that the, but that's what the heisman trophy has turned into you having a spectacular out of your mind year and then you leave but that that's the heisman that's and different not the heisman always. is different than the the college football hall of fame you should absolutely be awarded an award a major for award a season for award. a season yeah but if we're talking about a career in college yeah. athletics then okay. I, I, I would like to look at the, the totality and the length of time you stay in college. Yeah. Speaking of someone who hits both of those, question for you, D'Angelo, because a part of your inductee class is Reggie Bush, which is great. How mad would you be if you were Reggie Bush and you got inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame and you still don't have your Heisman Trophy bag? Well, I, I, I'm going to tell you a funny story about Reggie Bush that you brought that up. Uh, so I've always been a Reggie Bush fan. Yeah. Uh, we Same class. Uh, in terms of uh, NFL draft class, okay. same NFL draft. Yeah, yeah. Reggie went. Reggie went number two because Mario Williams went number one. Yep. That's a funny story. Uh, he he went number one to the Texans, and then Reggie Bush went number two to New Orleans. But I, I I'd always thought um, 
the the greatest college player of all time athletic wise has always been reggie bush but yeah. just pure yeah. greatest college player player like without the athleticism will forever be tim tebow no question really? uh yeah with yeah there, there's no bigger player in college history than tim tebow he had a whole movement and a whole cult in Florida that would do anything that he wanted them to do. Real, um, uh, yeah. I kid you not, D'Angelo, I kid you not. I was just at someone's house, and they're not even a Florida fan. And they, on their coffee table, had the Sports Illustrated with Tim Tebow coming out of college on the front cover of that Sports Illustrated. It was from, what year did he go out? 2000. And it was the one that he was Manchester one too, one wasn't. Yeah. Wait, wait, didn't have a. Sh- oh yeah, they people for some reason I I don't know if this is faith, if it's something that he does, and 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 I apply to my love his image and his brand, but whatever it is, it is something that is contagious that people just absolutely love Tim Tebow. I was around the Tim Tebow era when he played; <laughs> it was unreal. He couldn't go to class. That kind of college player. Uh, That kind of college player. Well, anyway, we're getting back to Reggie. I I I had opportunity to meet Reggie. We're friends now, and and but I told him when I first met him, um, I didn't like him, and the reason why I didn't like him is because I didn't think that I was better than Reggie Bush. I thought I had a better year than Reggie Bush, and he ended up beating me for the running back award uh, at the time. (laughs) Doug Walker Award. Award. I was I was upset about it because I, I I was I was trying to explain to people I was like I'm not saying that I'm better than Reggie I'm not I'm just saying that I had a better year than Reggie and then they brought up competition and stuff like that and I was I was pretty upset about the the Doug Walker Award because I knew I didn't have any because of the school that I went to and at the time we didn't have the same prestige that we have right now that I was a long shot on winning anything else. And the dope well, I didn't think I had a shot at the hall, none of that stuff. But I was like, if I have a shot at just pure running back, who had the best year, I thought I had a chance to win that and wasn't even close. <laughs> and now you're going into the Hall of Fame together. And we come in, we're going in the hall together. So <laughs> as a result of like uh my my few were rich, he don't even know about it because I told him about it. He was like, man, I didn't even know that. I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> but my, my father-in-law can't stand it. Oh. So, yeah, I told Never him. Never forget. I, I, but I told him, I said, yeah, I'm cool. He was like, I'm not cool with him. You had a better year. I was like, see, that's why I don't like telling you something. That was, you know how long ago that was? You didn't even have great hairs when I told you that. And now look at <laughs> Look I at love, you now. I love your father-in-law. Yeah. You need somebody who's going to ride with you in the family, dog. Like, mm-hmm. what? I don't like that person because of what they did to you 10 years ago. It's like, I got a girlfriend. You're like, wait, we're cool now. I got a girlfriend, an ex-girlfriend, excuse me. And people who are I'm close with, like, do not like this person. Like, yo, mm-hmm. listen, she didn't dump you. She broke up with me, and I love it. It's cool. We all moved on. Everybody good. What you I still, still mad for? I have a coach still to this day. Both my parents in the past, like, two years have brought up that coach. Like, I wonder what they're up to now. Hate them. It's like, damn. Thank you. That's what happened. Cut my playing time. Hate that coach forever. The end. <laughs> I just gotta say this, Jessica. I love the 2023 year. Thank this you. Is I love it. I don't know what your resolutions are, but I like them. Oh, speaking of resolutions, two weeks into the year, your boy D'Angelo, you be proud. I'm doing a good job. I'm, I'm sticking to my resolution. Right. What, what, what? He didn't, he didn't do any but to be the same bad no, well, no, version of himself. Well, listen, All that, the worst that, that things part, that, that he could point of, out. But no, my, my <laughs> honest resolution. My resolution. Can you speak for, say what, D? Can you I speak for yourself? Can you speak for yourself? Because Jessica's obviously trying to drown you out. Yeah, she does that from time to time. It, it, but you, you got to, you got to remember, D'Angelo, whose show this is. It's Rise and Grind with Jessica Benson. It's not Rise and Grind with CJ. It's Jessica. It's her show. She gets to do that. I, I get it confused sometimes because sometimes I feel like it's you all show. Yeah. But I, oh, it's hers. My bad. It's, it's hers. But He's listen, in his box, okay? I, I can't even get out. <laughs> Locked in there. In. Stuck. <laughs> so I, I've had pizza. 
both weeks. My, my New Year's resolution was to eat at least one slice mm. of pizza a week. And so last week I had Garibaldi's. This week I had Memphis Pizza Cafe. I'm doing good. I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm really proud of you. I, I, I really am because I, I'm off, I fell off my wagon probably day three. Oh. And I'm ex- I, but here's the thing, though. I didn't fall off the wagon because I I was trying. I fell off the wagon because of this. I I don't I don't necessarily believe in New Year's resolutions. I believe in like picking a time and getting better during the course of that time. Yeah. Well, I found out if you do that in January, then it's it's considered a New Year's resolution. I think it's dumb. Like I'm saying, no, like, I'm completely with you. It is the time is a construct. There is no different than starting a goal in January than starting a goal in July, except that we consider it the turn of a calendar year. And really, you can be more productive in the summer. The winter is not the time to start anew. It's but gloomy. I, decided to, I didn't make any New Year's resolutions. I decided to be the same old me until February 1st. So, so you're picking now, February. I'm picking February 1st because if I pick January 1st, it's a New Year's resolution, and then I can ultimately let myself down. Well, in okay. February, I guess mentally I could feel a little bit better about myself because I didn't start on in the I mean right. on the year. I, I I don't know. I just don't like I, I'm like you, Jess. The time is a construct. I was like, what's the difference b- between me starting October fifteenth versus January first? None. Literally no difference, except that there is a commercialized attempt to tell you that coming out of all this time where it's the holidays and everyone's feeling good and you go through Thanksgiving and you go through Christmas and you go through New Year's and it's like rah rah work is productivity is at probably the lowest point of the year and then January 1st comes and it's like you better be the best freaking version of yourself that you have ever been it's like whoa whoa I can choose when I want to be that I'm with you I think it's dumb the gyms are full everyone's trying to eat hell unnecessarily so if you're not in the gym in June, you don't have to be there. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, you don't have to be there in January. You're just p- taking up a spot. Although, if you want to be in the gym, like, good for you. Not, not that good for you. D'Angelo's you in the gym. Time? D'Angelo's in the gym. How often are you in the gym, D'Angelo? How many days? I, I, I try to go three times a week, but I'm, I, I'm not going this month because I don't want it to be a New Year's resolution. February oh, everything, it is. Everything that I was going to do January 1st, I have to now hold off and do February 1st because I don't want to be hell to to resolutions like yourself like you just said just now had you not chose january 1st uh cj you wouldn't be having this problem we wouldn't even be having this discussion right exactly yeah exactly and now you're in the gym and d'angelo's usually in the gym three yeah. days a week and now he can't get onto his equipment because your goofy ass is on the 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 stairmaster or on the bench i bet he has a home gym no he doesn't have space for that it's just Lies. This is a Hall of Famer we're talking about. <laughs> I don't understand how y'all, week after week, you're able to throw this back on me. I, I don't understand how you guys are that good. Um, I, I, I don't even know where I was going with this. Oh, I know where I was going with this. Uh, going back to what I said, how is there, so how do you fix the College Football Hall of Fame oh. in terms of criteria-wise? If you're going to move forward, like in in years past, and, and I'm okay with years past because obviously things change with the times. I get that. But, like, that's a drastic change to where, like, I can have one good year, like a, a out-of-my-mind good year. That's no different than the NFL Hall of Fame. You have two out-of-your-mind great years and then have – just average years after that, you you could be considered a, a, a Hall of Famer. But but sometimes the the out of your mind years are so spectacular, and that that's where it goes back to m- votes, right? We're we're all you me Jessica. We are all going to vote for different people. If you have a somebody would say, hey, that Cam Newton year was so ridiculous, and it was. Don't get it. Don't be mistaken. Yes. That yes. Cam Newton year was phenomenal what he did at Auburn. Yeah. And some would say, hey, that year in and of itself was so spectacular that even though he was only at Auburn for one year and only did that one time, he is worthy of being in the Hall of Fame. And I'm, I'm okay with that. I'll give you an example of mine, and I get into arguments with people about this 
uh, sometimes. And it's, it's odd because I don't really rock with this family. Unfortunately, Megan Triplett's not here because they, they are her football royalty. I don't kick it with the Manning the family Manning. like that. I don't like them a whole lot. It's sports hate, right? Just, ah, here yeah. come Manning. Yeah. And most of it centers around the Heisman Trophy conversation from 97. And I just decided then I was going to hate on Peyton and I was going to hate on Cooper and Eli and Arch and the rest of them just because I- I'm going to be a sports hater. But yeah. even though Eli Manning's numbers for his totality of his career are remarkably pedestrian, that two-year stretch where he got through, got the Giants to the playoffs and to the Super Bowl. That, that playoff run that got the Giants those two Super Bowls and his performance in that run, I think, are so spectacular that they warrant Eli being in the Hall of Fame, right? And that's me. That doesn't mean that it's right. That doesn't mean that it's, it's wrong. That is my, my vote. So if I had a vote for somebody like that, I would probably put him in if the year – or the two years in the NFL were spectacular enough to to warrant them being included in that. It's, it's all a matter of taste. And what I don't like with the CFB Hall of Fame right now is that it is way, way, way too structured and there is no wiggle room, right? And so I think that they've yeah. got to loosen up that structure a tad bit so that they can fix it and get uh, the right people into the Hall of Fame. You know, similar to how we moved out of the BCS and computers determining who was going to be in a championship game every year and moving to a a playoff committee and committees have their problems too, but putting it more in the, the feel of people and and like a broad range too. You need a a large committee. I think right now it's a, it's a board of trustees and I don't know how many people actually go through and choose, but you have the designation of first team all American. I think you have to, a Stetson Bennett makes that case. You have to loosen that up because how can you have a hall of, no, 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 because I, I mean, now I could be 35 playing quarterback for a team and I'm I'm way older than everybody else. But I'm I've got like six years. It's He's only 25. He wasn't about? 35. Chris Winky was 30 and Chris Winky should be in the College Football Hall of Fame. What are you talking about? Say, this is the ultimate point of the College Football Hall of Fame. You have to keep it to some degree because. Yeah. One part of it is arguing over who and who should not be in it and people who get snubbed and people who get in. And you're like, what the hell? That's part of the game. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> because you said NFL Hall of Fame and you was talking about uh uh Eli Manning, yeah. CJ. We're gonna keep this in Jessica, we're keeping this totally on the field, impact in terms of your defense on why he shouldn't go in. Not because of what he did off the field, but what he did on the field. Because you made mention of Eli having two sh- extraordinary years not statistically, well, I mean, they were they were okay, I guess. I mean, he, the, the playoff, he, Eli's playoff run was absolutely, absolutely statistically phenomenal. It's Nick Foles. He's Nick Foles. Nick Foles had a, the same phenomenal playoff years. Trent Dilfer had the same phenomenal playoff. Years. But I, I get what you're saying. Morning. I'm talking about I'm, I'm talking about Michael Vick. I'm talking about not what he did off the field, on the field, even before that incident. He was never considered a Hall of Famer. Uh, listen. Yeah, I, Mike Vick is in the Hall of Fame. You ask CJ Hurt who you putting in the Hall of Fame. He's in. I right. put Mike Vick in the Hall of Fame. But and it, it, and we're done. He's also going in there. Um, and I wasn't even an Atlanta Falcons fan. <laughs> it was just that the stuff that they did on the field. I was like, that's, that's stupid. fun. How did y'all yeah. do that? It's they had so much fun. And and what's crazy is is I've always saw a player like this. If you're a player and you can make another player good, then you let me know that you're a great player. I don't know for the life of me how the hell Michael Vick made Algie Crumpler look like that every year. Ah! I have no idea how he, because when he left, I was like, There's no, what happened? <laughs> That's what a real Hall of Famer does. Bro, Just I, like I, you. I, and here's your, here is your football that you received, D'Angelo. When is the yeah. ceremony? Uh, December 5th in Vegas. All right, December 5th, we'll all be there. We're going to bring the show on the road. Um, we're going to broadcast it live to celebrate your induction. But we love you. We're so happy for you. It's awesome. And um, Drink live or no? What'd you say? Drink live or no? Kind of like the, the whole thing where the first thing we did is they relax the rules. And let Can we drink like, live? Can we drink sure. live on the Sure. Like, well, the I think so. I, I'll, yeah. most, uh, like what is it? 
that people drink during brunch. That she, counts mimosas. Food. A nice little mimosa. Pick your juice. Have your champagne, or just the champagne. Toast to you. In the meantime, I will toast my gigantic water bottle. No, toasting water is bad luck. So take that away. Really? Yeah. Let's talk about that. That must be something in like, is that in like a different, like, I, I got I don't know. My husband said it to me once, and he said toasting to yourself and toasting with water is bad luck. And so it's drained in my head. Oh, uh, okay. There well. you go. D'Angelo, I hate to I hate to wrap it up because you are a Hall of Famer, but we have to go draft some 2000s pop songs. So, all right. We love you. Right. Congrats again. We'll see you next week. So right. Bye. Bye. Okay. It better, be, it better be up there. That's all I'm saying. All right. Y'all take it easy. All right. Bye, D'Angelo. <laughs> we'll be back on the other side. Chris Harrington going to join us to draft 2000s pop songs. It's coming up next here on Rise and Grind. three of yeah. my favorite craziest single, single game single performances. You want to start? Shaq was in his, uh, I think, second year. He was on the Magic, mm -hmm. and he was about to win the scoring title. And David Robinson decided, I want to win that scoring title. David Robinson scored 71 points and won the scoring title. <laughs> Join Lang Whitaker and me, Kelsey Ray Johnson, every Thursday as we debate the hottest topics in the NBA. I am HO on GrindCityMedia.com, YouTube, and our social channels. Eight-time Grammy Award-winning, Anita Baker. Anita Baker, the songstress, live in concert. For one night only. FedEx Forum, November 22nd, 2023. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. Don't miss your chance to see the legendary Anita Baker, live in Memphis. Are you ready? The toughest sport on dirt is back for an all-new 2023 season. Join the party and come watch the Cowboys of the PBR Pendleton Whiskey Velocity Tour ride the rankest bulls on the planet. The Bluff City Classic, February 18th at FedEx Forum. Tickets start at 15 bucks. Get yours at PBR.com or Ticketmaster.com. Get them while you can and find out what it means to be Cowboy. In the last two years, Georgia has faced six top 15 teams not named Alabama. The Bulldogs have allowed 13, 3, 11, 13, 0, and 3 points in those games. Who wrote that? Let's this, give this credit. from the Bear, Chris okay. Felica. I love the Bear. He always puts out great college football notes. Bear poops. What do we call this? <laughs> Get your sports betting picks and trends with Rob Fisher, Lang Whitaker, CJ Hurt, and John Roser. The Odds Couple. Now live every Thursday at 10 a.m. on Grind City Media and YouTube. Socios is the first of its kind in fan influence and rewards. Through the Socios app, you can influence the team you love, connect with other fans, trade, and compete for rewards. Socios.com is the official crypto wallet and trading exchange for some of the biggest sports teams and franchises in the world, like FC Barcelona, Juventus, the UFC, and now they are an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum. Download the Socios app wherever you download your apps, create an account, participate, and and win. Don't put off getting your oil changed, Memphis. The Grizzlies' official partner. Take five oil changes faster than you think. There's no appointment needed. There isn't even a waiting room. Yep, you heard that correctly. Take five oil changes so fast you don't even have to get out of your car. You can take advantage of Take Five's fast, friendly, and simple service at any of their locations across the Memphis area. And remember, at Take Five, you stay in your car because they're faster than you think. That means you won't even have time to show off your perfect jump shot or your killer crossover. Take Five, the stay in your car 10-minute oil change. Represent.
to Rise and Grind. It is the moment everybody has been waiting for. It is time for our 2000s pop song draft. This was supposed to be a year of boundaries, and I made none on this because I really should have done 2000 to 2010, but instead I just left it open-ended. So it's 2000s period, and there were so many songs that CJ and I decided we needed a third drafter, and so we welcome Chris Harrington into the studio. What's up, Chris? Hello. I, I think mine might be a de facto 2000 to 2010. I, That's okay. Most of them sit in that space. I have a lot harder time with the last five years than the, like, the first 15 or so of the, dec- of, the dec- of the century. I don't think we're quite ready to understand of the, of the last 10 years which songs will still be sitting in That's the space. That's generous of you. I think with me it's showing my age. Yeah. I will say, <laughs> so Chris and I, to, to prepare, my husband Chris and I, we worked out last night to a 2000s power hour. Oh, we didn't work out, but we, I strategized with the entire family. It was a whole, like, wife, kids, the whole thing we discussed. Yeah. I will say, the more people I brought into the conversation, CJ, on Twitter, I went on Instagram, there's so many songs. And then yeah, I also course. got really depressed because, are these our new oldies? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> right. <laughs> what a change in music culture. the Ronettes when you got, you know, I won't, I won't say any Tio names because I don't want to give away my list. <laughs> Like, listen, I don't have this guy on the list. I, I didn't grab a Jason Derulo song, but imagine Jason Derulo being a, on an OD station because yeah. it's happening. He's the new Bobby Darren. Oh, my God. Jason Derulo. It's Jason Derulo to you. Um, I will say, What You Say is a great, like, that was at least made my list of millions of songs. And we are going to have a Spotify playlist of all of these. CJ and I have already added 100 to the list. Okay. So we will see if there's any that haven't crossed over. I'm tuning it out now. At this point. But the way that we do this is we draft five. It is a hard five. It makes the stakes incredibly high for each and every pick. Uh, we usually flip a coin on who will pick first. But I'm going to give I'm going to give our guest well, the we, first pick. Well, and yeah. then oh, CJ. Wow. Yeah, we'll, we'll flip a coin. Rock, we need, paper, we'll, scissors. We're flipping a coin. We're going to flip a we're coin. We're going to flip a coin. Okay. So Harrington goes first. Curtis, if you can throw the coin flip up. And we'll flip. Jessica, I'll be kind, and I'll let you call it. I will. I'll take heads. Okay. Now, is this snake style or like you know regular NBA NFL draft? Style? Regular NBA NFL regular draft. NBA. All right. It All gives right. me a big advantage. It, it does. does. What did you say? Oh, yes. You didn't say hit. Yes, I did. You're already you cheating. You do this every time. Right. You are a cheater. Right. You're complaining. You're out here throwing me under the bus saying, oh, Jessica won't let us expand. And then I'm like, should we expand? And you go, no, we shouldn't expand. But on air, I'm going to tell you. Anywho, five songs. You do have a significant advantage. We go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, yeah. three. Um, I'll, I'll have well, Look at my start. list. Don't cheat. Right. Am I going first? Is it yeah. time? going first. Am I on the clock? You are, you are officially the 2000s pop song draft starts now. You I are need on a the phone clock. for my war room. Um, you know, as I, I said, I do have a war room, but we did our prep last night. I, I, I bounced this as a top overall pick off my daughter. She agreed this was a good top overall pick. So multi generational appeal. Me and my just turned 18 year old daughter both agree. Not necessarily my favorite. It's not necessarily my favorite song of all the songs that can apply, but of the ones in my top 10, to me, this is the one that's the most, the ideal of a great pop song. Okay. And that it has appeal across generations, across genres. To me, a great pop song takes like a universal sentiment, but makes it feel specific for anyone listening or anyone singing. And has to have that life-giving chorus, a chorus that yeah. can power a small yeah. country. Yeah. It, this alone is reason enough for the existence of American Idol. Since you've been gone, Kelly Clarkson. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Number one. Why, Chris? Why are you doing to me? Because I know that's a song everybody wants. Oh, come on, man. Finally, Kelly Clarkson gets some respect that's on right. this show this week. My goodness, we've had a long conversation of if Kelly Clarkson deserves to be in the top 200 singers of all time list vocally. Don't you, we don't have to get into yeah, it. Yeah, it's different. We could be here all day we, on We've that spent one. A, a lot of time dedicated to that topic, but since you've been gone, absolute oh, pop song. We're choosing banger. songs not singing. Are you, are you with her, with this pick? He wanted yeah, to pick. I wanted this was, this was of course his, you did. his choice. Of course you did. Oh, man, as I number one. You have added I am thrilled because when you were talking cross-generational, I was worried that you were going to take my overall number one pick, which I think sits in a, a similar space to all those things you said, and primarily because I remember being a small child and hearing this song for the first time and my mom saying, I love this song, and that would be Hey Ya yeah, by Outkast. Yeah. You also need a good tagline, shake it like a Polaroid picture. While that is a thing in real life, it is a thing mostly associated with this song. And what's cooler than being cool? Ice cold. Random words and phrases that are said in regular outside of music culture because of a song. And Hey Ya yeah embodies that. 
So Hey Ya is a great record, period. No, no, no argument. My only, my only hesitation on Hey Ya, and I, didn't, I don't have it on my list of contenders that I was thinking about, is that I, I feel like it's actually suffered a little from overexposure. I feel like the exposure has not powered it. It's sort of just because it's so singular and it's so unlike anything else. I, I don't know if I don't know if I feel like it's been a little overdone to me. Intriguing. But the thing about pop songs, they're supposed to be hugely popular. That's they are. the whole that, point. That is the word of pop. And yes. as as we will continue through this draft, it also makes it complicated because a popular song can embody just about every genre. Right. Under the sun, and so you have a, a spanning of very different kinds of songs. Yeah, it's like hip hop plus like British invasion pop plus mm-hmm. it's like plus R and D and like all kinds of stuff. Yeah. All right, CJ. Hey, guys, is a beautifully depressing song if you sit down and listen to the words, and we don't care because we're, we're just up here trying to shake it. the The best line is. If nothing lasts forever, what makes you think love is the exception? Get away from me. I'm breaking oh, up with that, you. That's a great line. Like, it's, oh, it's, go. so, it's so good. And I did all I will this also say work. Roses is the superior Ro- song I on that album. I love Roses. And, and we talked beforehand. Speaker Box, Love Below, one of the great albums of all time. And you could throw The Way You Move, Big Boy song on there. Like, that was great. Some Kelly Clarkson notes. I did all this research on this paper, and Chris Harrington took the song. But I do want you guys to know that Pink turned it down, and Hillary Duff turned it down. Oh, wow. That's how Kelly Clarkson ends up with it. Pink turned it down. I don't know why, but Hillary Duff couldn't hit the notes. She's like, yo, I'm not going to go out there doing this embarrassing myself. We should so all I'm give out. thanks that Hillary Duff turned that song down. Yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I, there's a clear two to me. I, hey Ya is fine. I wouldn't have picked it in my top five, but Hey Ya is a really good song, just not one that I would have taken. There, are, There's a clear two. Clarkson, Since You've Been Gone, is one. I, Beyonce, Single Ladies. Like, I'm, I'm not sure how. Mm. You talk about feel and, and longevity for a pop song. Single Ladies last for, it's going to stand the test of time. The, the story that's being told there, the 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 beat, the up-tempo, the, the power that comes lyrically from Beyonce, the dance moves. We're doing this still to this day at weddings. <laughs> like, we love doing this. Uh, so give me give me single ladies, Queen Bee. That would be my first pick. Also the this. Dun, oh. dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Single ladies is great. Would not have been my, my Beyonce song. I thought See, you were going someplace else there. This is the problem. To me, the twin titans of, and I'm, I'm going to mention my daughter again because we're talking about this. The twin titans of this exercise are Beyonce and Taylor Swift. And the yeah. problem is that there are too many choices. Mm-hmm. And, and they almost cancel yeah, one another out. And it's hard, it's hard for me to figure out what my, my favorite is of those. My daughter's going to some party where they have to dress up as uh, characters from music videos from the 2000s. That is the most depressing okay. thing I've and, ever and heard. And we, we were discussing, um, she's going to do... Um, from You Belong to Me, Taylor Swift, she's going to do Captain. the, um, not the cheer captain Taylor, but the In the Bleachers Taylor. Got it. Nerdy Taylor. Yeah. And we were discussing what, what other than like that, what are the most iconic, like, you know, figures from videos from the 2000s. And it's Beyonce and Single Ladies. So that's one you don't try to pull off. But there's another Beyonce and I don't want to show my hand. I'm not sure I'll, I'll take it now because I don't yeah, want to oversaturate with one. I got some Beyonce options on my sheet. So but I there's a very it. specific uh, short denim shorts and oh, that, that white was a, tank that top. That was a life changer. That, it was for everyone. Oh my goodness. <laughs> for everyone. I, was, I was at a basketball camp up in Ann Arbor at the University of Michigan, and it was a joint basketball cheerleader camp. And the cheerleaders, we we had a joint talent show, and the cheerleaders came down, and their their song they danced to was that song. Is that Dangerously in Love? Uh, crazy in crazy Love. Crazy in Love, yeah. excuse crazy me. Love, crazy yeah. in Love was that song. And they hit us, they jumped, and they turned, and they hit us with the uh-oh. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, Lord. Yes, sir. 13, 14-year-old like, me lost my mind. I feel like if you're just saying what's like the definitive popular Beyonce song in the era, I think it's those two. I think it's Single yeah. Ladies and Crazy in Love. Yeah, that, Those would be my two picks. All right, we're back to you for your second pick. All right, I'm about to make myself a liar because I just said seconds ago that Beyonce and Taylor Swift were the twin titans and of this list. Gonna take them. I'm going to I'm going to double up an artist on pick number four. Sorry, Miss Benson. I am for real for all the baby mama's mamas. I have to do it. Wow. Miss Jackson by Outcast. Nice. Ooh. Nice. A song that is both Andre Benjamin autobiography and also sort of the portrait of a generation. To me, not as a not so much of a pure pop song as the first three we mentioned, yeah. but a pop hit, and to me, maybe just the best song period of the century so far. Never meant to make your daughter cry, but you made me cry with that pick. There's a lot going on in that song. And there, there is a lot going on. I would have taken that. that, That's on the same album as uh, Bombs Over Baghdad, right? That's on Stakeonia. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I would have taken that one. But Miss Jackson is is great, and that's the issue with this thought exercise. Is you guys (laughs) mentioned it? A lot of these artists are going to be on here multiple times. It's just which song are you gravitating towards the most? I love that pick. 
this is the worst exercise of all time, but also the best exercise of all time because there are no wrong answers. And so I will go with my. Oh, there second might be some pick. wrong answers. We we, we, we well, have not had one, one yet. This one might test. We have not had one yet. But I I am sticking to it because it's iconic as a pop song also as a music video and you mentioned beyonce and taylor swift but at one point there was no bigger pop princess than britney spears herself and i will take toxic with the number two pick i was between oops i did it again and toxic but toxic the glitter bodysuit will live forever the flight attendant situation on the music video and it's just a great it's a great song Baby, can't you feel I'm calling? That hits. Everyone knows the words from there on out. The theme of your list so far with Hey Ya and Toxic is songs that are like seven genres at once. Yes. There, I mean, that there, sums me up yeah. well. <laughs> like these are these are like triple axles, like, mm-hmm. you know, in the air songs, basically. Literally in the air in yeah. this one. I love Britney. I went to that concert, so I'm nice. a little. Uh, yeah, Oops comes in just over the line. By that. That, that, I know. Yes. The, the 2000 line, one that really got me that I thought was for sure in the 2000s, uh, Smash Mouth's All Star. Not in the 2000s, yeah. pre dates. So, say my name, Destiny's Child. That was a tough one. To learn. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, CJ, your second pick. I know the stance of both of you on certain artists. And so, this isn't my number two per se, but I know that the person who I want to be number two is going to be available, so I'm not going to take them. I do not know, however, if Molly Cyrus is going to be around. Mm. So give me party in the USA, the catchiness of it all. Hopped off the plane in the LAX with my jeans and my cardigan. Dreams, Dreams. in my cardigan. Jeans, it doesn't matter. You don't have to know the words to the Best pop thing songs. About a pop you song. just make them up as you go. <laughs> I love this song, and I'm not sure I know why, because it's just catchy and it's fun. It makes you feel good. I love it. It sold really, really well. Uh, fastest selling single released by Hollywood Records at the time, and came out like oh nine. So that that's something I loved. This version of Miley Cyrus also give me party in the USA. It's a great song. It's All a right. jam, and continues to be played. We just saw it on Miley Cyrus's New Year's Eve. That song gets played. It's, it's one that everyone big, sings along to. It's a to. big sing along song. But particularly for that generation, never really did it for me, but I, I did think that was going to get picked. And so I'm not surprised it's off the board. It was on my list as well. Your next pick is. Already. Wow. I just, you so guys are just leaving me bangers one after the other. I'm going with, um, you know, this artist was 26. This is a, a teen pop classic, even though the artist was 26 when, she, when it was released. And I think 27 by the time it became a hit, which made her sort of the... Um, the 2000s teen pop version of Gabrielle Cartieris being 30 years old on Beverly Hills 90210. But I'm going Call Me Baby by, oh, um, by, by, I by Carly Rae Jepsen. I thought I could that with a last pick. And CJ points out one of the great lyrics of, of the um, of the century of Hey Ya. I'll, I'll match that with um, if, and Call Me Maybe, which you know, sounds like this sort of light pop song. But in the middle of that, there's this lyric, Before you came into my life, I missed you so bad. Which to me, one of the great like young love lyrics ever. I missed you so so bad before you came into my life, and you should know that. God, such a good song, S- Carly Rae Jepsen. Didn't do all. She she's tried. She's made other yeah. songs, but this one. She's had got a such a great hold. personality and great energy to her. Yes. But yeah, that's you know she's got other hits, but that's really I mean you know th- that'll be the lead lead on the. And call me maybe the obituary. Oh, not song. to get morbid. <laughs> Call me maybe singer. That that's what it comes down yeah. to. What is the song that someday? Very How many of far us have achieved distance, this much? You know exactly. Yeah. To be known by something that is so universally popular. I will go with my second pick in different genre. I'm going to go with in the club. Fifty Cent, the beginning notes. Everyone knows. And how many times have you said, "Go shorty." It's your birthday. We're going to party like it's your birthday. We're going to drink Bacardi like it's your birthday. And you know give a flip because it's your birthday. <laughs> this is a PG version. I almost accidentally put the, uh, the edited version on our playlist. I did not. Thank goodness. Um, I love that song. And I think, again, one that came out in 2003. I, a trend of mine is songs that came out like late elementary school, early middle school for me. But that is what shaped popular music in my mind. That's definitely maybe the rap song of the century that like your grandparents would be familiar with. They would sing that chorus. Yep. I think we've reached the point now where like anyone's going to sing that chorus. 
I think so. Yeah. That's, that's how I feel with that one. Of all of those within that, I, I thought about perhaps, like, I, I don't want to give away in case it's on anyone's, but Drop It Like It's Hot sits yeah. in a similar-ish space with that. Um, but that is my pick. CJ, you are next. All right. So far, so good. Uh, we talked about pop princesses and I, I and the, the rulers of this genre post-2000. And I think, Carrington, you are absolutely right. It is Beyonce. It is Taylor Swift. But every now and then, somebody comes through with a real nice run. And Katy Perry's five-song run that goes California Girl, Teenage Green, Firework, E.T., Last Friday Night. I want somebody else to show me a five-song run that is comparable to that. It's amazing. And it may only be Beyonce and, and Taylor Swift. I love that five-song run. My favorite one of those, though, and the one that I'm going to take is Teenage Dream. I love Teenage Dream. I love everything about it. Uh, I was I really enjoyed all five of those songs and Katy Perry's whole catalog. So give me with my third pick, Teenage Dream. I think that's the right Katy Perry pick. I think that's the right pick. We, we were talking about this with my <coughs> with my family last night. My son was very bad at this, and he's like, you know, Kurt Vonnegut unstuck in time. He's like, how about the Beach Boys? He's like, no, wrong century. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 his but his first his first his first suggestion was Eye of the Tiger. We're like, that's the early '80s. He's like, no, you know the one the woman sings I Eye of the Tiger. The eye of She's the like, does he does he think does he think the does he yeah. think the, the, he think the, the singer that's for Survivor was incredible. a woman? And finally, she, my wife found Eye of the Tiger on her phone. He's like, no 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 no. He was talking about Roar. Katy Perry. That's where we're at yeah. at this point. That's uh, that's a good that's a good pick. I, Put a pin on what you just said about someone with a streak of songs like that, but it is your pick. So yeah, I think I I'm going to do it instead of you. you. Okay. Um, I'm in the tough choice category, part of my list now where the songs that are like, tr- like obviously great pop songs were versus the songs I really love that I'm not quite sure if they fit the, fit the description uh-huh. or not. So I'm going to go past the, the songs I love to a song I love that I know fits the description, an artist that's got to be on here somewhere, and we're getting – too deep now she's got to she's got to show up i'm go umbrella by rihanna now a lot of her songs i don't know if i'd call pop like mm-hmm. i love love on the brain to me it's a hit but that's more r&b yeah umbrella is a pop song yes and a pop song in sort of that since you've been gone kind of just big simple huge chorus like a song for everybody kind of way so i'm going umbrella by rihanna this quick side note did you watch the golden globes last night Golden Globes no. is a racket, man. I know they put celebrities on TV. That's the point. Right, it's yeah. chaos. Rihanna showed up oh, only she? to lose to RRR, the Not Too Not Too song. Did you see RRR? We're a big RRR show here. So, I got to confess, I saw you tweet something about RRR. There are so many people whose taste I um, respect, like yourself, mm-hmm. who really like RRR, that I got to give it another chance. I got about 10 minutes into it. And I knew it was three hours long, and I knew I had all this other stuff I needed to watch. Yes. And my problem with it was the look, just the general look of the whole thing looks like a video game to me. It's a little too CGI-ish. You mean the realistic tiger? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even, even talking about the, the effects. I'm talking about the actual just look of it yes. looks... It's a not, weird visual. Yes. It's different. It takes and I don't like that to. video game look. I got to go back and give it another chance. You have to get to the Not Too Not Too Sing, which won best song, beat Rihanna's song that she did for Wakanda Forever, beat Lady Gaga's song that she did for uh, Top Gun Maverick, and RR just came out and snapped that from anyone. Rihanna showed up, and I just can't imagine what it's like to be Rihanna, because almost between Rihanna and Brad Pitt, those are the only two people that the presenters point out and make like very pointed jokes. And Rihanna just wanted to sit there with ASAP Rocky and live her best Golden Globes life. But right. alas, I just said the name of the one. There were two directions that you could have gone in other and that pop was one of women. Them. And Rihanna's one of them. Right. And the other is Lady Gaga. Yeah. And when you look at the run of Poker Face, Love Game, Just Dance, Bad Romance, Born This Way... Lady Gaga has a pretty nice run of her own. Now, I struggle to pick the song. When you pick Teenage Dream for Katy Perry, I agree. I could go in a lot of different directions here. I am going to pick... I said I would do which one felt right at the moment. What feels right? And why is it Poker Face? Poker Face is what I wrote. I'm going with Bad Romance. Okay. I'm going to go with Bad Romance... Um, 
I'm going to go in with it because it feels that way. Poker face would have been an answer. Just dance, I think. I think you could make a case for any of those. And so just personal preference wise, I will go with So Just romance. Dance is ruined for me because when that song was a big hit, um, your your studio neighbor, Chris Vernon, was doing a segment on his show every week about the, the top five songs. And that was like number one, like every week for a while. And like he would sing along with it and they would goof on it. And so I hear like John Roser voice um, when, I, when I hear that song. Not, not Lady Gaga voice. So I can't quite go there with that. Understandable. Understandable. <laughs> <laughs> Rosa uh, has ruined things for us as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but not Ski. Not yet. Give Ski a break. No, you've ruined Ski for me. I may be out on Ski. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. CJ, your pick. My pick is a game changer. Change the way we do music. Okay. It, 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 it revolutionized and gave artists a bit more control in their, their product because you are now able to just get this thing and throw it up on social. Lil Nas X paid $30 for there a beat, did that song in a day, and it is, to me, if not the first social media song sensation, it was the one that did it the best and blew the doors off of that thing. And much like ringtone music and ringtone songs were a thing in the early 2000s, what Lil Nas X did with Old Town Road and Billy Ray Cyrus on the remix, what he did for the the creation and the, uh, not necessarily creation, but the pushing of the boundaries of music on social media and making that one of the things that leads to sales and leads to your popularity is truly game-changing and truly revolutionary. Give me Lil Nas X, Old Town Road. I love Old Town, Old Town Road. This is one of my contenders high on my list. You talk about cross-genre, cross-generational mm-hmm. appeal. Not only does it have that, it has that, and it's super weird. It's so yeah. weird. Yeah. And I love that something that weird became that popular. And I don't know if you guys have seen the video from the, I, I, I tweeted this out yesterday amid these conversations to my friend Matt Herlica about this. You guys have seen the video of him performing at the elementary school, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. One of the great moments of modern culture is a cafeteria full of nine-year-olds absolutely losing their mind, singing with communal gusto the line, can't nobody tell me nothing. Like, that is like Nobel Prize territory, right? <laughs> Lil Nas is trying to get them to quiet down. He's like, I Nobel can't hear the Prize. music. Like, screw you. This is our song. This isn't yours. It's so We're true. performing. These I, kids, it's like 1964 Beatles for these kids. They yeah, are losing it. I, I remember when that came out, I did an entire sports cast that was just using lyrics from Old Town Road. I mean, everyone was singing that song yeah. all the time. And I think that is our first cross family, our first n- Nepo Example on this list because we had Miley Cyrus with Party in the USA okay. and we have Billy Ray Cyrus on Old Town Road with Little Nas Big Cyrus, X. big Cyrus supporter over here. I Bet see you didn't that. know that. You big achy breaky heart guy. I love love achy breaky heart. All right. So good. Old Town Road off the board. I think is that the most recent pick that we've had as I think well. It is. I think that's that 2019. Is the, I think 2018 something yeah, like that. Either one of those two. Yeah. Mm, okay. This is man. Your the last final pick, pick is the it's toughest. To- I know. So I got four songs on the sort of my upper tier I was thinking about, and two of them fit fit the mix of what we're doing, and two don't, but I think they qualify as pop songs. I'm going with a song that, even though it peaked at 87 on the top 100, and even though it's it sounds the least like what you think of as pop, to me it's, it's a classic pop song in that same since you've been gone sense of taking this universal sentiment and making it sound specific and making it sound huge. And I think the pop bona fides are bolstered by Beyonce borrowed part of this song for her formation, her um, Lemonade album. Okay. I'm talking about Maps by the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs. Oh! Wow! What a pick! To me, it's, it's a song of the century candidate. Okay. The, the question to me is, does it qualify as pop? I think it does. I think if, if In the Club qualifies as pop, right. Maps qualifies as pop, anything. That, that's my take on it. As, as I was prepping for this, Everything qualifies as pop. I feel like it has to. It has to have like at least made the top one hundred. Has to. I agree. Appeared on radio. Appeared on somewhere. Yeah, you know. I, I should say anything yeah. popular makes right. pop. Anything that at some point the majority of people in, we'll say this country specifically for this exercise, knew the song, um, then it sits in a space of pop music. Right. I, that's a great song. I well, you said you had a, a tier of. Four. Um, I have a tier of about sixty-two here. Right, right, right. From, well, I got about twenty-five still on my sheet here. Selection. Uh, there are just infinite options, so we're gonna throw a dart. I am surprised that I'm not going to do 
crazy in love. I really, I came into this draft thinking that that would end up on my board, and I'm not. Again, the shorts, the tank. It was an iconic moment. I will, however, go with kind of a cross off. My husband told me that he would divorce me if I didn't take Avicii's levels. And I just don't think levels sits in that space for everyone the way that it does. He was convinced that it was number a, a number one hit. It was not. How, how does I don't think go? I even know. I, mean, no, I know the artist. I think hit. I would have to oh, hear it to recognize they, it. They sample, um, got a good, something's got a hold on me. So okay. it's, oh, sometimes I get a good feeling. Oh, yeah. Man, I man, get man. a feeling like I never, never. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's all. Got do, it. Do, 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 do. That would not have made my top 300. Sorry, Chris. Okay, I lo- I I adore that song. I think it was also a very specific like when we started college. Um, yeah. everyone the big running joke at my school was like, "Will you play levels?" Like it just was a whole thing. But I will go on a cross shoot of that of something of a dance club beat that is the kind of thing played in a club that takes hold of large swarms of people who just end up jumping up and down. And I will take cascades every time we touch. Because every time we touch, I get this feeling. And every time we kiss, I swear I can fly. I don't, don't you feel my heart beat so I want you to know. Yeah. That I one. don't know if I even know that. What? So when you were describing the song, what came to I mean, maybe this is, speaking of gener- this is a lack of cross-generational yes. appeal here. When you were describing that, the song came to mind for me, which I think was 2000, 2001, early, I think makes the cut off, was One More Time by Daft Punk. Which Simil- was very like similar yeah. vibe. Would put that in the in the same thing. Um, also, uh, Get Lucky. Yes, cut, also like, Daft Punk. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah, so that kind. But that was, oh no, if someone said bad pe- Xavier... I, the last pick was the hardest pick. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we, just we both sort of went off the reservation a little yeah, bit with, with yeah. our fifth pick. A little like curveball. So CJ, are you going to stay? I listen. Y'all are giving me some or? some things to to think about here as I look at my list. Um, I love "Feel Good" Inc. by the Gorillas. I love it. That was my first ringtone. Was "Feel Good." I just it's only five songs though, and there are songs like that and like. Uh, pieces of me, Ashley Simpson, like Complicated by Avril Lavigne, that hit me in an emotional place. I just can't bring myself to take them in my top five. Holla back, girl. I, I, I only know how to spell bananas because of that song. B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Like, I, that was a, a really good one. Um, but I saved this one because I knew I could get it. And he's got to be on here somewhere. I think I tipped my hand on Twitter for this yesterday. You you did. Yeah. You did. You did. In the negative way. In the most negative way. <laughs> and, that, and now now I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> Give me Bruno Mars. Give me Uptown Funk. I don't know how you can hate on Bruno Mars, man. I love this song so very, very, very much. Recorded right here in the city. Look at how much fun they are having. I, I know. Me, I, I the, shout out to Royal Studios. The, the um, pop yeah. song genre for me is okay am i having fun with this yeah and and all of my songs i'm pretty sure i picked are really really fun songs and this the from everything from the music video and the colors and the dance moves it's great when they perform it live the lyrics are fun smoother than a fresh jar skippy you know how many times i say that like come on hot damn I'm pretty sure this is my son's favorite song from age seven to like age 11. Like four years in a row, it was just like yeah. the number one. Like it was like a dark side of the moon level run among grammar school jams in that era. I will never forget when uh, Chris came home from something and he had f- found Bruno Mars. And he was right. like, Bruno Mars is the greatest artist of all time. And we just listened to Bruno Mars straight for a significant period of time in our household, which I think kind of ruined Bruno Mars for me a I little can't, bit. I can't get over, and I don't know where, who first said it, but I, it, was a, it was a tweet. I actually found the tweet yesterday. I can't get over the, the observation that Bruno Mars is what Prince would sound like if he were born and raised inside of a Target store. <laughs> I mean, I just can't get past that. There's no reason to come for Bruno that way with that type of, (laughs) that level of hate. But listen, Target version Prince. Target's, Target version stuff is pretty nice. I, I, like, I like Target. Target. I agree. I, I like agree. Target. So we're not saying he's the Walmart version. We're saying he's the Target version. That's true. Right. Target. Fancy yeah. Target version. No, that's good. See, that was a good final pick. I, some others we can just briefly go through that were within that realm. We Belong Together. I think it was at number one for like 14 straight that, weeks. Mariah Carey. That's it not was, 90s? It's not 90s. Oh, okay. it's, it's considered her comeback. She had had kind of a drop off That's for a my favorite years. Mariah song, actually. Me too. And yeah. so I, that would have been there. I overlooked Despacito that one. had quite oh, yeah. the hold on the world. 
Yeah. Um, Bootylicious, Rolling in the Deep. Rolling in the Deep. Yeah. Bye, I, bye, I, bye. I had, Ushers, yeah. I had three so I, I divided my list in the first, second, and third tier of my contenders. And Rolling in the Deep was one of the songs I had first tier. Yeah. Adele Adele is a major one we didn't we didn't hit. Yeah. I know. And there's something Rolling in the Deep has a little more pop to it. There's right. something sad about Adele sometimes. Yeah. Uh, that's just where she No, like, I think Rolling in the like Deep. Like I wouldn't that, put Hello on a pop even though technically it is a pop hit. I really wanted to include Natasha Bedingfield's Unwritten. Okay. <laughs> or Pocket Full of Sunshine. A two hitter. I mean, Easy A will forever put Pocket Full of Sunshine. I'll, I'll spare you my lengthy third tier honorable mentions. But my first, so my, my, my three songs that were left in my first tier were Rolling in the Deep, Dancing on My Own by Robin. Oh, that's a great one. And then this is another one sort of like Maps, where is this pop? Is this not pop? It was actually a top 10 hit, and that's Paper Planes by MIA. Yeah, that was all mine. And then my second tier, Old Town Road, which CJ took, was in my second tier. My other second tier picks, four of them, were Izzo by Jay Z, mm-hmm. Get Your Freak On by Missy Elliott, oh, yeah. um, uh, Royals by Lord, and then recent um, Driver's License by Olivia Rodrigo. Oh, Driver's License made the, the bottom or the most. That uh, BTS's Dynamite okay. felt like it should have a, a oh, nod yeah. in, in recent time. Um, something from Lizzo, either Good as Hell or Juice. Yeah, my wife and son campaigned hard for Lizzo. I yeah. like Lizzo a lot, but not. she doesn't quite hit the, th- the threshold for me with a list this tight. Yeah. CJ? Um, you don't know you're beautiful. One Direction. Oh, One Direction. One Direction. That was great. We, we talked about Jason Derulo. I can couldn't bring myself to select a Jason Derulo song, but pick one of those because the hold he had for like two or three years was was great. Who else did That's I? how I felt with let's, Black Eyed Peas. Let's get it started. Black Eyed Peas was real close to, to selecting them. Uh, I'm trying to think of people you guys hadn't another, said. Another Memphis connection that warrants a, a mention is um, written by a Memphian who I knew when he was in high school. Um, the Time to Pretend by MGMT. Mm-hmm. That was on the Power Hour that we yeah. listened to. Don't you, Pussycat Doll? <sighs> Uh, Milkshake, Khalees, yeah. Work From Home, Fifth Harmony. These are all the girl groups. Lose Star Control, Ships. Missy, Starships, uh, Gangnam Style. I got to give a shout out to Combination Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. <laughs> Big fan of that. <laughs> yeah. I, I honestly got, I have I'm in love with a stripper on my list just because <laughs> it was a great song. <laughs> Still Again, is a great like, song. I Laffy I, Taffy, I don't Candy think of those, Shop. I don't think of any of those songs as pop, but they they are though. Yeah. You, you mentioned her on Twitter, but Amy Winehouse rehab. rehab. Yeah, definitely. I love that song to the, forever and always. In Someone honor, to call my lover if we wanted like a Janet that was in two thousands. In honor of Santi Aldama's five for five shooting the other night, I got to give a shout out to Lights Out by Santi Gold. That's the official song whenever Sa- Santi Aldama shoots Lights Out. Are, you heard we, it here first. Right. We, we went over time. Um, Super bass. We're still kind of going. Chris, can we get you to add a couple of songs to this playlist right here? So Pick. give us, Beyond all the stuff I've said? Yeah, okay. We'll run back through them. Curtis, right. go all the way down to the bottom. We're going to add these songs. Because I'm pretty sure we don't have some of the songs that oh, Chris whoa. said on this list. Apple bottom jeans, boots oh. with the fur. With the fur. The whole club was looking at her. She hit the Bodak ball. Yellow, Cardi B. Oh, that's oh, a good one. That's a good one. From last year, Break My Soul, Beyonce. May have been my Beyonce pick. Okay. So let's add Bodak Yellow. Let's add that one, Curtis, if you get a chance. I'm a little upset that Kesha didn't make any Bodak of our... Yellow. <laughs> Frost. B-O-D-A-K. We Found Love, Rihanna. I don't know. I mean, I've said lots of stuff. I've, there it is. I, we I, Found I, I, Love any of was we, my wedding We Found song. Love. What's that? We Found Love was our wedding song. There our you primary go. wedding song. Yeah. It's a great song. That's the re- that was the re- that was during the reception. That was not your pr- processional. It was our it was our it was a an instrumental version of it was the processional and then oh. it's how Chris and I entered our reception. Interesting. Yes. Chris, so, what, was, what was your number five? For me? Yeah. My maps. number five yeah, yeah, was yes. um maps. Maps. maps by yeah yeah yes. I went off, off not to be confused with maps by Maroon Five. So my, at our wedding our processional was um For Your Precious Love by Jerry Butler, okay. the impressions. And our recessional was I uh, I can't turn you loose by Otis Redding. Ooh, those are good. Yeah. Those are good. We did for did you have a first dance song? No, that's a long story. Ours is too. We did a um, dealer's choice or, or guest choice where they put options into a, a hat and then our DJ selected five and we did like 30 second increments from five different songs. CJ had a really great, great song called Put It In Your Mouth. That was his official. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Darn. If that was in the 2000s, I would have taken didn't it. Pop make, song, we didn't damn. make the list. I DJ'd a wedding once, and that was Did like you? the best time I ever had. Wow. So friend's wedding, friend from college, and it was like me with a bunch of CDs and all the bridesmaids coming up saying, do you have Beyonce? And me saying, am I a monster? Of course I have Beyonce. <laughs> What do you think I am? Why right. was I hired for this? Well, Chris, we appreciate you coming in and helping us sort through it. Um, if you want to find the album on Spotify, what is it called, CJ? Rise and Grind 2000. Rise and Grind Post 2000's Pop Playlist. I we're gonna we're gonna put it in the chat it's at the end of this. It's already there in the it chat. Is. Uh, we'll put I it. Send it out on Twitter. Rise and Grind uh, Post yes. 2000 Pop Music Draft. There it is. It is a, a beautiful place to be. It's really fun to listen to all of these songs, which I guess are now our oldies. So thank you there for going go. through this level of music with us. We will be back tomorrow. Tonight it's a Grizzlies game day. Grizzlies Spurs here at FedEx Forum. Uh, we'll see if the Grizzlies can increase their winning streak to eight. We'll be back tomorrow morning to talk about it. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. We'll see you then. Thank you for watching Rise and Grind. Tune in tomorrow at 8 o'clock to hear more from Jessica, right here on Grind City Media. Tick tock on the clock, but I put the record on tonight. Wanna fight cause I see the sunlight. Tick tock on the clock, but the party don't stop. No, oh.